goes. Some of you have uh, have have gone through it. Some have been long and some have been short. Um, and they're being um, either taped so that you can go over it again, which is wonderful. At any point during the presentation tonight, um, stop me, ask me questions, or ask anybody else questions. Love to hear from you. It's nice to see people from east to west. This is wonderful. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing. So anyways, Louise and I are going to discuss a little bit about umpires and lap scoring tonight. Um, we're going to start by introducing um, ourselves to you, if you uh, care to do it. Louise, um, you can talk a little bit about yourself when yours comes up. Uh, Serge, could we do? Oh, okay. We're going to go to the agenda first. That's what I would like to cover today. It's been such a long time since I've sat, I've stood in front of a class at school teaching. So, hey, bear with me. Um, this is what I basically put down as our agenda tonight. Um, the one that I said topics that may can be covered, I'm not saying we're going to cover everything tonight. It's just some of the items that uh, I went through the book, our, our 2020 rule book, and uh, picked out some of the items or some of the rules, especially that had uh, quite a bit of notes after them, the green notes. Um, those were the interesting ones to see. So um, we'll do a few maybe tonight. And if somebody or any of you would like to add on what you do in your area, that would be wonderful. So let's move on from that. Okay, these are um, descriptions of what I have as uh, in my portfolio, what I've got and Louise has. Um, I should, uh, found, I found out today that Louise is leaving to go to uh, the Para Olympics. And I, I believe it's in, um, you're gonna be stationed in Tokyo, Louise? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> So what is your job, if you could tell them? Um, at this point, I, my joke was I'm just so talented that they aren't giving me a specific assignment. Um, I got to go last, I wasn't able to attend in 2020, so um, therefore I wasn't eligible for when it was held in 21. So somebody backed out last minute, and so I was able to join, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Um, but at this point, I don't have a specific job. Um, I just get to go wherever I get assigned to that day, which makes it a little bit more difficult because if I know where you're assigned, you can hone in one specific area and be prepared for it. Now I just got to be prepared for anything. But um, either, either way, it's just a thrill to be going. And who are you going with? Uh, what do you mean, who am I going with? <laughs> Who's your partner for the para? Uh, from Canada. No. Oh, sorry, David Weicker is also attending. He's going to be on, uh, he's going to be one of the video vet referees. Excellent. That's good to hear. Um, in addition to Louise and David Weicker, I should say that uh, Jane Edstrom, who's on the uh, Zoom call tonight, is going to the Olympics also, and she is going to the one uh, for Able Body. Uh, Jane, would you like to just jump in there and just uh, do a couple of comments? Sure, just as I unmute myself. Thank you, Helen. Um, uh, yes, I'm uh, very honored to uh, be going to the Olympics in Tokyo this year, and uh, I am uh, hoping to be not busy at all because I'm secretary to the jury. So I have to, uh, if there are any uh, formal appeals, I have to gather all the information, um, convene the jury and uh, deal with uh, any uh, formal appeals that uh, happen. Excellent. And who's your partner going over? 
Um, well, Danielle Michaud and I are both going, but Danielle will be in Sapporo because he's doing a race walk and, uh, and the, uh, the marathons and road races are being hosted in Sapporo and uh, the rest of the athletics is in Tokyo. So chances are Danielle and I will not see each other. Mm -hmm. so, so that means there's four officials from Canada going over to the Olympics in a few weeks, correct? Yes, okay. we're, we're very fortunate this year. Well, we're very proud that four of us are going over and representing Canada. Thank you so much. Uh, we know that you'll do a great job and you'll also have fun, I think, I hope. Okay, so that's a little bit about Louise and myself, if you've gone through it. Um, nothing spectacular, I don't think, except for Louise, she's an ITO. Uh, that's pretty good, um, but that's, that's about it. Okay, Serge. Okay, now, if you receive the NOC newsletter and have any of you received it, the latest one, I think that went out uh, last week. Um, in that newsletter, this is basically what um, an explanation of what the purpose and aim of this event program leader group is. Uh, so if you would like to very quickly scan it, but if you don't want to look at it now, it is in the NOC um, on, um, on track newsletter. So you can see that. I couldn't put it all on one page. So this is part of it. Serge. That's the next part of it. Um, I would assume that if we do these, we'll probably do them all on Zoom. It's nice to see people. Um, we've been cooped up long enough, and some of you have already started uh, doing your track meets, which is great. And the last page of this document, and uh, you will see that it is on the Athletics Canada website. And I really encourage you to, from time to time, go on the Athletics Canada website under officials, see what's new there. Um, I know this is not part of umpiring and, and uh, lap scoring, but um, please check to make sure that the information about each one of you is correct, because uh, uh, Gilles Rochet, um, he definitely would like to know if there are any changes. And uh, sometimes emails come back, they bounce back. So that means maybe your email has changed and we don't know anything about it. Louise, did you want to say something? No, I'm just fine listening to you talk. I'm not used to standing in the front of a classroom. So you just keep on uh -huh. going. <laughs> okay, well, I'm hoping, you know, after I do a little bit of this, people are going to start talking. Okay, Serge, next one, please. Okay, number three. Like I said, I went through, I don't know if you can see this. This is the book and this came from Alberta, I think. Right, Louise? The coil bell uh, one? I oh, can't, yes. No, I it was can't put anything on the screen, Helen. You can't. No, I, I have a leader in 2020 Gartner Magic Quadrant. Is that what I'm supposed to have? No. How did I get that? I don't know, dear. So what do I do now? I don't know. Uh, why don't you try going out and coming back in? Okay, I will. Okay. So anyways, we got these books um, from Alberta. I like the coil bound ones the best. Um, this is the one that's dated 2020 edition, and it hadn't been used last year. So this year, I made sure I went through and highlighted many things, and I put little sticky notes alongside. So I went through and I just took out some rules that we might look on. Um, you know, the CR stands for competition rules, and TR stands for technical rules. So um, 
I really don't know which one you want to go and talk about, but if we keep on going through the PowerPoint, maybe we can come back and we'll discuss one of these. I know there's a couple that I would just like to hit upon, but let's go through the PowerPoint first. Serge, please. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many of you use this type of a chart for your, um, your national meets, your national championship meets, or even provincial meets, your team of umpires chart. Uh, I find it the easiest thing to look at. Um, uh, as a track referee, I like to have that, but I know during the course of a meet, if the meet happens to be maybe two, two and a half days, three days, this sometimes changes. So it's easy to move people around. And if you notice um, the lap scoring team is uh, the last column, and that usually is the one that leaves. So then to do the lap scoring for the distance races, and then we just work with the first three teams. Any, anybody have any comment that they use this or they don't use this? Anybody? Does anybody use this? I haven't had a chance to use it because I haven't uh, been a, a section head at that level, uh, like a national championship. So, but I, I'm aware of the of the uh, form. So I have seen it many times. Yeah. Helen, is, is it filled out by the chief umpire then? Yeah. Yes, it is. In, uh, not, not, a sec not a section head umpire. No, like chief. No. No. chief umpire fills it out, but they always ask the track referee or they will ask the meet, not the meet director, the, the organizers of the officials. Um, I hate to say this, they'll say, who's strong? Who's this? Who's that? So we can put them in the right column, in the right section. So if you have someone that is a level three going to a level four, you'll put him as maybe an assistant section head so that maybe one section, uh, the section head and the one that's trying to go to the next level can flip yeah. and they can do a little bit of section head work. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, oh, okay. go ahead. Sorry, Barb. Um, it's Lynn. We, we used it at NACAC. Yes. And, and we used it at nationals in 2019. Yes. And, and it, 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 it works very well because you've got a picture, but also you can, you can shift them if you need to. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're going into a, a meet where maybe you don't know all of your officials. And so day two, you may want to rejig. And I used it when I went to Legion Nationals. Um, yeah there as well because it gave me an overall picture and you kind of knew where everybody was even if you didn't know who they were <laughs> yeah well this is it if you're going from let's say ontario to alberta and you're the you're the chief umpire you might not know a lot of the umpires in alberta so you need somebody to help you along the way or once you get there you might even change this whole chart which is, uh, sometimes that happens. It does. Kathy? Um, yeah, um, we've used this many times and I may be getting ahead of myself, but is there a way, is there a plan? Um, and maybe Jane, you know, to put some of these templates on the website because um, you don't necessarily have them when you want them. And it, it would be good to familiarize ourselves with them. Um, I mean, I'm, we've used them here and it's very no. helpful, both as the chief umpire and the track referee, but um, it would just be nice to have one consistent template across the country. It would, or, if I may, yeah. if, Go ahead. If I may speak to that. Um, yes, there is plans to have a common database for all of Canada. In the meantime, go to Athletics Alberta. We, we use this at every track meet. Yeah. It's mandatory that all our new umpires learn how to assign position and use this. So we use them all the time. 
And so all the templates for everything we use as umpires is on Athletics Alberta website. It's also on the Athletics Ontario website under officials resources or forms. Because Helen put it there, I don't know, you put it there after Pan Ams because we use this at Pan Ams. Yeah. Well, we've been using this a long time, but I, I've seen it in other provinces too. It's just that um, I don't know if a lot of the level threes have seen it or have uh, filled out one of these yet because they might not have been a chief umpire. So I'm sure they will have seen it if they've worked, uh, you know, even a provincial mate. Um, but um, I think like I, I wanted this on because I think it's the easiest thing to look at, really. I don't know about the rest of you. Uh, Helen? Yes, yes, Claude. One, one good use of this template, mainly on a multiple day event, is the ability to uh, talk with the team leaders that might be uh, an assistant uh, chief umpire because it's part of their path of either to evaluate them or to give, give them the experience so that they're interested into a higher grade. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, as they're close to section head and then even move from section head to assistant chief umpire, you know, during the course, of the weekend when we host these meets, they might not have done it for the whole day, but maybe a section, a half a day or whatever. But yes, Claude, you're right. It is good. Any other questions, comments on this? Helen? Hi, Helen. This is Vince Sequeira speaking from BC. Hi, Vin. Hi. Yeah, I love this chart and we have our own version of the sim similar thing um, in BC. Um, for those of you, uh, others in BC are, are familiar with it, and I was also um, quite familiar with the, with the Alberta one, and I like the Alberta one as well for the, the few times that I was out there at meets. Um, however, in all of the meets that we have had in, in BC, I, I use this all the time, and very rarely do I uh, ever get a chance to fill all of, his, all of these out, even in our provincial um, uh, level meets at the most we might get is um, six or seven uh, umpires and then um, all the rest becomes um, you know luxury I mean the mm -hmm. only time I ever had the opportunity to um, use the full uh, chart when I was out at the uh, legions and Kathy uh, Kelly uh, can attest to that and that was when I was in it was in heaven oh gosh I have a team with section heads otherwise you know for the amount of um, uh, meets that we do, a lot of them are lower levels and we don't have section heads. Uh, we just don't have enough people. So, you know, we, we just adapt to it. And um, I don't think um, a, a lot of the um, lower level uh, umpires, like level threes or, or, and stuff, they may be aware, they have seen it, but rarely have they had a chance to actually right. use it. Right. Um, uh, we have used this, you know, you had said uh, the lower level meets. When we do the provincial high school meets, when we used to do it, um, depending on where it is, we had a lot of umpires, so we would fill it out, and that would have been a provincial meet. Uh, but I mostly see this um, at, um, well, it used to be juniors and seniors, nationals, national championships, uh, legions, you know, where you do have you have pretty good 18 to 20, 24 umpires. There you can fill out a chart like this. But um, yeah, most of our meets that we do, I personally speaking, um, I don't do this or I didn't do this until I got to the higher level meets. I would, I would attest to that. I mean, even in our high schools, we don't have enough bodies to warrant a sheet like this we might do it freehand on a piece of paper or yeah. using a track template mm -hmm. um, you know we just take a couple of blank sheets and put names or numbers or just so people get a sense of the eye line uh, the site line rather yeah. and um, usually depending on who's there it's a quick if they're volunteers it's kind of a quick primer on what what to look for and, yep. and stand here 
roughly stand yep. here. And I find the blank track form as helpful. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was my next slide. Yeah. Uh, something like that, the oval, um, as useful. And usually it, those meets aren't so packed that, or that we have so many people that we, we can place them as the events occur, mm -hmm. you know? So that's just, um, that's Manitoba. I mean, we always like to see more people. And again, this template uh, of the ovals is always very uh, helpful. And this, uh, um, I'm glad Sarah's went on. Oh, Lily, uh, hang on. Lily has a question. Just a quick question going back to the previous uh, uh, slide. Thing. Yeah, slide. The, the uh, lab scoring team and the, and the team section below is that to put your lab scoring team there yes 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 so basically it's a b c d and d is say it's uh, for lab scoring team yeah so you put everybody who you want to lab for i normally the last column under the heading lab scoring team it has the section head and then the team are those ones that will be doing all the recording for the distance right. races with the timers yeah Okay, that I didn't know. Helen. Yes, Lynn. There was a question in the chat of somebody that has never seen this and was just asking for a quick, how do yes. you fill it out? Yeah, I saw George's little uh, question. Yeah, George, we will send it to you. Okay, I hope you heard me. And I volunteered. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. All right, George. Thank you. I had sent George a private message saying I'd explain it further if he had questions yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, offline from this because it, it's not a long conversation, but time no. we have yeah. today. Well, I'm sure there's going to be some other, um, you know, forms or, or you know, that he might want to see and uh, use down there. And I think you're in Newfoundland, Labrador, right, George? Yes, and we're slated to host the Canada Games in 2025. I hear ya. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sarah, next slide. Please. <laughs> please? Please? You gotta say pretty please, Helen. Pretty please, Sarah? <laughs> oh Sarah's just gone to sleep. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Okay. Hi. Um, this slide uh, is an example of some of the forms of oval pages we've used. Um, we've done it where there was only two ovals on a page. We've done it with four ovals on a page. We've done it with six ovals on a page. Um, I think the best one for uh, looking at it, coming from an umpire's point of view, is four ovals. So you've got four quadrants. And within those four quadrants, not only do you have where the umpires are placed with numbers, you also have uh, uh, instructions on how they are to signal. You know, uh, let's say umpire number four will signal um, number or, or assistant umpire, chief umpire, and everything will be written down under the oval and any other information that the chief umpire would like to convey or remind the umpire also goes down under. So I've seen this and it works beautifully. I know in our area, um, Sherry and Barb and Ben, um, who've all been chief umpires, they use that type where all the information is right on the page and each day has a new page, depending on what uh, what races are being run. And um, I don't um, I don't know if Barb or Sherry or Ben would like to comment on that, but it is easy to look at. Very easy to look at. Sure, I'll comment, Helen. Sure. Um, just to say, uh, a number of us actually use Microsoft Publisher in order to make our ovals and we share it amongst ourselves. So we have a standard uh, 
set of ovals that we use depending on whether it's hurdles or distance races. And then uh, we often will put in um, just the, the positions like Helen said, um, the flashing order, and then any extra notes because you can have anybody from a volunteer official to a level five official who is at the meet and just some reminders of what they should be watching for or how many laps there are or how many jumps or where the starting line is, you know, for steeplechase, uh, such things as that. And often what we will do is we'll try to put uh, the ovals like for the morning on one page and then for the afternoon on another page and then for the night uh, on another page. And we give uh, everybody the package at the start of the day and then go over it with them. And oftentimes there's changes, which uh, we all, in Windsor anyways, we're all, we're all willing to share everything that we do. And I know we've shared with, uh, I've shared with Lynn and some other people who want to use Microsoft Publisher uh, to do their oval. Uh, I personally, uh, well, because now you're, for, for uh, small me, I love the six, um, what do you call it, uh, tracks there, but I prefer them without the, um, what what do you call it, the, the, for example, the first one is, uh, 1,000 meters, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters. I like to put that in myself there because I like to do it by time. And first event is at this time, second event is at. So I prefer you send me something, tell them once that it was just blank inside and I've been using that for a long yeah. time. But yeah. this is for small needs that you don't require, you know, you just put who stuff flashing who and at the bottom I put who's the chief umpire and the track ref and just quickly the name, but for, I, I believe for bigger meets, it, it is good to have something maybe for a page with much more info in it, more detail. Well, like I said, you know, this is just a sample. We've gone through so many, Lily, you know that. We've yeah. gone through so many different oval pages and it seems like the easiest ones to look at are with four ovals and then inside the ovals, uh, it states what race it is, which yeah. is great. Now, this one just has 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 within one oval. Well, that is just an example of what we could do. Right. But, um, uh, you know, like, it, we got to make these things simple for ourselves, you know, easier to look at, you know. And I find that um, I, being a teacher, I like to highlight everything when I was uh, working towards my level five. So I would usually tell everybody, Bring your highlighters, you know, when you're doing this. So you can highlight your spot on the track for every single race. And then you do another color to highlight where the chief umpire is or yeah. the assistant. So it does work. Maybe I'm a visual learner. I think I am. But um, if you can, um, you know, just look at it and know right away which way to look, that's wonderful. But here's an example of an oval page. Yeah, that helps a lot the highlight. I like the highlight thing. That really works well with me as well. Yeah. yeah. I believe in the umpire binders. I know for Ottawa we put highlighters in them. Yeah. And I think I think the Ontario ones are as well. Yeah. yeah. They are. Yeah. Helen, what I wanted to add that when you get to a meet where you have uh, 16 plus umpires on a track, really you can't put more than two ovals on a page because Visually, you can't read it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, on, especially as we age. <laughs> yeah. And it's true, depending on what, re, uh, what race you're trying to do. Like, I don't think I would put a 16 umpires on a 100 meter. No. You know? no. Yeah. 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 We, we, we've we've chopped me. that, that uh, oval down to only show the 100 meter area. And eliminate the rest of the oval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, um, you know, I'm not that great with whatever you call this to make these ovals, but um, I'm sure you can manipulate them to whatever you want to have on your oval page. But um, besides the team of umpire page and this one, I think these two are really good, really good that they should be there somehow. Anybody else comment? before we go on? 
Well, Helen, is there, uh, I, I know we like to use the four or six, but is there a standard? Because I remember other meets where I received an umpire binder and there's like one per page, right? Every event gets its I own uh, oval. It, it depends, Ben, on um, who's hosting it and how that chief umpire likes their pages, really. Um, how, like how much said, paper and photocopy they have access to. Yeah, exactly, you know, uh, printing, if you have to change it, are you going to, you know, just for one, I, it's up to you. You being, Ben, you being a principal, you have access to that photocopier. So you can I, do it. I've got my own stuff at home. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, you know, a lot of paper. It's a lot of paper. It is. Helen, for some of the high performance meets this year, the, the chief umpire sent the ovals out to the umpires so that they could view them ahead of time. And then the responsibility was that the umpire would print their own. And that reduces the risk or reduces the the printing cost to the umpire because nobody reimburses us for paper or ink or so that was kind of putting it back on them and then they could print it two-sided or one-sided whatever worked for them i think barb did the same thing she uh printed all hers out also when we had the high performance one in windsor yeah yeah um, it is you know we don't get reimbursed for this we're doing this out of the goodness of our hearts and we for the them. for the ottawa meet i i don't have my publisher working so i had i wrote them on oh and then photocopied them <laughs> and put them in the umpire binders oh my god and oh that's good that's good well i mean yeah, yeah oh, like barkley okay. rick yeah. um and some of the guys work in the start line they go what do you where do you need me to be and you can yeah. show them and yeah. their number and uh, they were they they liked no, that, like that was a much better picture. So you could yeah. you weren't just saying, well, you're over there near the two somewhere. Yeah, or the, yeah. yeah. I had I had to laugh because one of uh, it was Rick Watkins in a, on a telephone conversation. He says, now I know what those binders are that you guys carry around at a meet. Yeah, yeah. It is. It does help to have binders. So usually every every spot in the province will have a set of maybe 24 binders full of paperwork and everything that you could possibly. But, you know, we've got to that point where everybody will have binders in each of the, you know, the big areas in the province that host the meets. That, that's a lifesaver. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Ellen, so, yes, yes. uh, Claude did have a, a comment in the chat. Oh, I didn't see it. Sorry, Claude. Shoot. Oh, I was just asking if if you have 30 umpires, which is the, the big meets, yeah. if, if a six track no. kind of format like that could have, have enough space to sh be able to read properly your uh, number and the instruction, it seems to be quite tight. No. I, I wouldn't do six ovals on a page, no, Claude. If anything, maybe with, uh, you have 30 umpires, I would go down to uh, two maybe, possibly four, depending on the races that you're doing. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of information. You've got a lot of people on the track. Um, depending on the race, you might not have all your 30 umpires on the track. Uh, I know at one, one big meet, do you remember the meet in Moncton, I think it was, the world, where mm -hmm. we were supposed to be hidden. So some of us were standing on chairs outside some of us were standing on tables outside so we can see the track. It's uh, sometimes it's difficult. But, but you're, um, ta you're talking of the catastrophe meet. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <It was kind laughs> but uh, you, you, this, this kind of six would work on a local or regional kind yeah. of events where you have maybe six or eight umpires to work with. Then yeah. you could organize them, show who's the the leader at the other end and you're taking yeah. care of one end and that yeah. then I would see it, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. definitely, I agree with you. Anybody else? Okay, Serge, please. Okay, okay, um, the uh, umpire report form. 
We've gone through so many different versions in Ontario for this form. Um, I don't know what number this is. Uh, Sherry Purdy could probably tell us. But um, this, when we showed this to the umpires, they thought it was the best one because it was less busy and um, it wasn't so cluttered that they had to look all over to fill everything out every time they wanted to make a report. And by filling everything out, it took time. And some of these meets, you can't have that luxury of having a lot of time. The track referee needs to know what was the infraction, what happened, you know? So we found that um, very simple. I think this covers exactly what a uh, track referee would look like, would look for. For me as a track referee, when this umpire report form comes to me, the first thing I look at is the description. I want to read what it says, and then I'll look at the oval. And then if I have a question, then I look up at the top to see where this person is, the number of the umpire, and we go from there. Um, I don't know what the other provinces use, but I think Ontario uses something like this throughout. If I'm not mistaken, Lynn, Barb, Sherry? Yeah. Lynn? We, oh, oh sorry. Um, we use these at provincials if we have, like the lap scoring form, we use that. But the, the umpire form, yes. The only time we, um, at nationals, um, the track referee that was at Legion Nationals wanted his form to be used, so we used that one. But it's very similar to this, only it was um, um, bilingual. Yes, and that's what happens in Quebec, too. Um, uh, I know I get umpire report forms from, uh, from Roger Poirier, and his is bilingual. So the minute it's bilingual, then you have uh, more, more written work on the paper which makes it more uh, cluttered um, and you have to look and find everything. It, it would be wonderful if we had the same umpire report form right across Canada, but um, understandably when we need bilingual, automatically you'll have more written work on it, more instructions. This is the one, Helen, that you did for, um, or Sherry did, somebody did for Pan Ams when we tried to simplify, because there used to be a whole bunch of information in the middle. Right. And, and it works out really well because, you know, you're, and people, once they get used to using it, are really efficient with it. Yes. But the first time they write a report, it's like, oh my God, it's like they've never written anything. Mm -hmm. I know when, uh, when we went to this type of a form, Lynn was talking about inside the oval, we had um, all the different things that could possibly go wrong um, and, and the rule numbers. Well, um, most of the umpires said, well, we don't really want that in there because we're not gonna be checking them off and disqualifying the people. It's the track referee. So they agreed and Sherry did this over again, sent it out. And this is what they came up with and they liked it. They didn't want to, even though they know that it's an infraction, uh, they didn't want to see it up there with the rule number and everything in the oval. So it's simple enough, yeah. get it down pat, write it fast and ship it down to the track referee. It's simple and clear. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Kathy has his hand up. Uh, yeah, I always forget how to put my hand down now. Um, <laughs> anyway, thanks, Helen. Yeah. Our form in Manitoba is very similar. We need to find one form and stick to it. I see Doris is on, and I'm, she may concur with that or not, because we have different versions floating around because we like to save paper and, <laughs> and not create um, more paper. But um, I really like this because it is so simple. Mm -hmm. And the description at the bottom is exactly what, as a referee, I would want to see. And um, I'm all for one form across the country. If you need wow. to modify it for 
um, you know, bilingual provinces, you know, that's fine. But I, I, we've tried the half page and that doesn't work. No. Um, and maybe many of you have, um, because as the referee, I just want to go quick to each point. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And make a decision because we don't have a lot of time. Right. Exactly. And so, um, I, I quite like this and, um, it's similar, I guess they're all similar, right? Um, and same with the lap scoring sheet, it's all very similar. It's yeah. some, some of its preference, mm -hmm. um, how busy you like it. I don't like forms very busy, so. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, Going anyway. to uh, the, the lap recording form, um, this has worked quite a bit for us in Ontario. Um, I've seen other ones that are uh, maybe instead of, I consider this uh, a vertical, I've seen horizontal lap scoring sheets. I can't figure them out. I try, but I can't. This to me makes sense, um, maybe because I look down the sheet, but um, uh, I don't know if anybody else, other provinces use, use this, but I think this is the easiest one to do. And it, uh, it definitely tells you you can't have more than six numbers following them for lap scoring people. Any comments on the lap recording form? Helen, Any? it's Anne. One of the things I've seen personally, if I, let's say I'm doing a, a 3000 and, yeah. or, and you know, you got so many laps, seven. I tend, whether you start at the top and work down for seven or start at seven and from the near the bottom and end up. Yeah, well, it's, you know, you get used to how you do it and you still get to the end result. Yeah, you, you really still get, yeah, well, and to count up and yep. I'm going, you no, know, you, the lap scoring, you got to be able to count down because you got to yeah. be able to match it. Yeah. Somebody yeah. was counting up, I go, no, 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 no. Well, usually when, when the track referee receives these or even the chief lap uh, score receives these, at the very bottom, you can tell by the times in what order those athletes came in so if there's any discrepancies you go back and you look at the times that all your your lap recording officials have recorded and you pretty well can tell and you should match with how the result is if there is a discrepancy anywhere i personally like the 24 23 22 i don't like the one two three that confuses me so i usually use if yep. it's 3,000 outdoors, so at seven and a half laps, you start at uh, seven to go. Yeah. Well, that's my way. I don't know other people. Everybody has their yeah. own way. Right? Everybody but, has their own. Yeah. yeah. Lynn? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lynn. The problem that we have in Ontario is that many meets, we do not have enough physical bodies yeah. to use this form. So yeah. we running order or finishing order and yeah. you just you do the best you can i have my own forms for each distance race that i pull out and it runs it's the same thing i go down and mm -hmm. but and i have them all marked off but it it's just very seldom and and if you have a if you don't have a lot of if you have level one level twos they can maybe do two competitors they can't do three or four or five or whatever. So um, I remember one time Dan Phillips, and he's he said four is my max. Well, he's telling you the truth. Yeah, he was. But you know, at least, it, but he could. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's what you get used to, and Lynn is right. You don't always use these because it's not a uh, big enough meet where there's a lot of runners doing a 3,000 or a 5,000. But um, once you're in umpiring long enough, you'll, you'll see it, you'll get used to it. And um, usually it's the chief lap score who does the running total as they come across the finish line. That's important. And also you have to inform your athlete that you have how many laps they have to go. And that, depending on what part of the country you're in, 
is different. And I've seen that. Um, so um, I wish all of you could try these because uh, it does take practice to get it down pat. Helen? Go ahead, Claude. You're the chief. You're the king of uh, lap recording. <laughs> Let's say a few years of experience. <laughs> uh, the um, one thing that seems to have changed, at least on the higher level of competition, is that the competitor's number had disappeared, right. which is a real challenge. Yep. And uh, I know here in the provincial level, we managed to give them a, a, a number that we stick on their shoulder uh, yep. so that we that basically our reference yep. uh, instead of reading their name of that person. And that's a key difference in, into the ability to be able to record the time. I'd say in practice, four is typically a maximum for most of the lap score that I know of. Mm -hmm. And the competitor number, which is shown to be at the very top line here for the, for the 10K, uh, in, I've seen it most of the time on the line above the event uh, that will basically be the top of the column, the, whatever right. is not used will be, will, will you, won't, you won't have to go through, so to speak, it, you're starting with the competitor's number just above the line of the, of the meet being a, a 5K or a, a whatever other one that you have there so that you're, you're in a block, so to speak, of data together without having a big void. Mm -hmm. and, and Claude is correct with, um... Now that there are names on the front, it's harder. The numbers are on the back of the athletes at these elite competitions. And um, you'll see hip numbers and chest numbers, which definitely save a lot of us. You know, as long as they don't fall off, we're good. We just follow, you know, one digit or maybe two digits instead of having three or four digits to look at and writing them down. It is difficult with the larger numbers, but uh, Claude is right. Yeah, a lot of them are now um, showing just names on the front. The bib is names and the numbers are on the back, which is a little bit more difficult. Anybody yeah, the else? Hip, the hip and chest number really it's a lifesaver. Oh God, definitely yeah. lifesaver. You have, when you have 16 or 17 uh, people yeah. in a 5,000 and they start lapping each other, mm -hmm. not fun. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Okay, anybody else? Helen, as far as the placement of the lap scores. Yeah. Are we, most of us are sort of using sort of seven, lane seven, eight. Yeah. Is we that call, sort of the stand, is that sort of where, where we're allowed now most? Uh, 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 the one I've seen is depending on how many athletes you have, the more athletes you have, the further, you know, in seven and eight you are. But then you're at a, in a, uh, Elite meet, you will have media there. You will have cameras there. And they don't want to take a picture of you. They want to take pictures and, you know, videos of the athletes. So it's a good idea to talk to uh, either the track referee where they want you to be, or you can ask um, the meet organizer where you want. But normally I've seen them all the way up into lane five you know, on the bend, you know, I've seen them all the way up to there, but it all depends on how much traffic is around that area, just past the finish line. Okay. I'd say six to eight, as far as if you have the, the ability to do it, Yeah. Uh, if you have a group that's large enough, of course, if your group is small, you, you two lanes are sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, will you talk about the person doing the uh, change in lap, lap number changes and things like that? Uh, the, our bell ringer and our lap counter. Well, we can discuss it now since we're on lap recording. Um, usually, in addition to the lap, lap scores and uh, your chief lap score, there's also somebody usually behind them reading out splits every time an athlete crosses the finish line so that you match up the time that you hear with your athlete that crosses the finish line. 
And if there's no lapping, then the purse that's ringing the bell and doing the lap counter has got a good job. He doesn't have to worry. He, she doesn't have to worry about it, um, trying to figure out. But if you start to get lapping, this is when it gets busy. Um, the lap counter and the bell ringer will only uh, reduce the number according to the leader. So if you have the third person, or let's say the 10th person, you have to inform your athlete how many laps they have to go. And sometimes by yelling it out, um, it's, uh, it's not the greatest. I've seen yelling it out. I've seen it shown a number. I've seen it um, actually the lap recorder lap score gets up and moves in closer so that it, they're almost talking directly to that athlete. Um, I don't know which is the best way. I really don't care for the yelling it out because if you have a group of let's say five and your athlete is in the middle of that group, how does he know that's his time? Well, you have to tell him, okay, uh, hip number five, you're at 1036, you know, things like that. It's very difficult in some cases. Claude, do you want to add? I'd say uh, in big meets, you will not be allowed even to raise from your chair to come close to the athlete. So that's one challenge on big events. On smaller events, uh, you have the ability of movement because there's not the same kind of uh, strictness in, into your movements and uh, which which makes life easier i'd say uh, and that's that that that's the biggest challenge is yeah. is the level of the event that will provide you restriction into your ability mm -hmm. to communicate or to to move or to even change your position from your chair because you're typically when you're lap scoring on long distances you're sitting um just a quick question at a national level meet uh, would you be allowed to stand up from your chair and get close to the athlete so you can tell them rarely rarely yeah but like you said if there is a, if the athlete if my athlete is sandwiched between two people but I see, no, I will have to really yell tip number five. Yep. You're going to have to, Lily, because they don't want you to get up at the bigger meets. Yeah, I know that's a little professional. It's not nice, but it's just not. No, no. Uh, it's just a little comment. I was watching the uh, Golden <laughs> League uh, on the weekend, and I think it was, I can remember, it was an 800 or 1500, and the guy doing the bell. Lab rang the bell for the leader, so he started sprinting like crazy. In fact, he had one lap to go. So came to the end, he ended up in second place. So he did well, but yeah. And this is, you know, the Golden League is money involved. So the poor bell, bell guy must have felt so bad. Well, this is it. You know, when you lose track, yeah. uh, you as a lap scorer will maybe lose your athlete. You know he's out there on the track. Yeah. You haven't seen him. You've watched him. And you don't have a time for that lap. It's okay. You'll find him again there. Um, there will be gaps sometimes in your sheet as you're recording this. Uh, but you try hard to get it as close as you can. And uh, they pretty well have their own pace. You'll eventually see what they're doing uh, around the track for every lap. You know, the time that they're taking yeah. to do this. Um, this is difficult. Lap scoring is is difficult, I think, to do. Yeah. I think and I'd, I'd, I'd add <laughs> that the I had that the uh, it's more important to try to record the time than to yell at the person that for that lap is one behind, so to yeah. speak. Uh, you could catch it next next uh, round that he's in front of you and, and provide the data, but he, he's aware of his rhythm typically and yeah. he's not too concerned by that if i missed if i if i miss louise 
Sorry, I just wanted to say that if I happen to miss it. If I may interject before we move on. Um, Barb has her hand up. Oh, I, it was Louise trying to get on, but Barb, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say oftentimes uh, using these lap recording forms, especially for people who don't have a lot of experience using it, because the chief lap score really is only concerned about doing the running total at the end, they will often assist you to find your athlete. Um, and, and so, you know, if you are on a team, please use them and say, I can't find my athlete. Sometimes some of the other lap scores who have lots of experience, have really good eyes, and will pick your athlete up for you and remind you as they're coming by so you can find them again. I would agree. If I'm chief lap scorer, I always tell my lap scorers, look over my shoulder. If it's a confusing race, I might not be able to talk to you, but please look at my form and help figure out where it is. Yeah. Um, I have found um, once your athlete knows your lap scoring, they will look to you. You don't have to worry about yelling at them. They know you're their lap scorer. They will look at you when they come around, especially in the longer races. And again, to, to reiterate, yes, it depends on your level of meat. And you also have to realize that some of the meats that we do, they can't all speak English. And right. so we have had it that every lap score has a set of like numbers, like the lap counter. So you can show them what they're down because they're not going to understand what you're telling them. So you either got to show them with fingers or with flip numbers what lap they're on. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Louise. Yep. Anyhow, I think we need to uh, to move on and call yep. it quits for two minutes. Yeah, I just uh, want a few things. We're not going to spend too much more time. It's it's an hour now, a little bit more than an hour. Sears, do you want to go to the next uh, slide, please? Okay, this is what I put down for topic number four, session length, duration, and frequency. These are the things that um, I thought we could talk about, but look at them. Don't forget, this is being taped. So we don't have to make a decision right now. We can do it at the next group session, group discussion. Um, obviously, duration, we've already gone over an hour. I didn't even believe that we could do that, but I'm glad that everybody's engaged in, in talking and, and it's, you know, saying things that have happened to them. Um, Sarah, the next slide. Uh, questions or concerns, uh, what are yours if you want uh, us to discuss anything in general uh, or specific to lap scoring or to um, uh, umpiring? Uh, there were a few things I would like to go back to just to highlight so that you can think about them maybe for our next session. Um, but if you do have any questions or concerns, please send them to either Louise or myself. Serge, the next one, please. Uh, future schedule follow up. I don't know how many times you would like to meet. Um, if you would like me to set a time or you suggest right now because of the Olympics coming up, I don't think we really need to discuss anything till maybe September. So that gives everybody a chance to enjoy the Olympics, you know, the able body and the para. Um, and I think the para is finished uh, September the 7th, maybe somewhere around there. <laughs> so if we could go maybe and do another one um, in September, the middle of September, how does that sound with, uh, with you? If I could schedule one for middle of September? So August will be free for you to watch the Olympics. And then September, we might have some good discussions on anything that might have happened at the Olympics that an umpire maybe didn't catch. So we'll see that. Um, the next slide, please. That's my thank you, Louise's thank you for attending. Um, 
The only thing I would like to point out, I did have a question or a comment. Um, this was a few weeks back and it came to me by way of Brian Thompson in BC. And Vince, this was your question about the batons. So I'd like to, and then you made me go to the rule book. Um, I, I would like you to, when you have a moment, everyone, go to your rule book, look for batons, and read what it says about batons in relay races. And it was interesting because I have never seen that. And even though I've done national and national championships and international meets, I haven't seen that. It's interesting that, uh, I don't know if everybody has their rule book with them, but there's seven. Yeah, it's on page 155 if you do have your rule book. ER 24? 24.6.1. 24.8.1. Vince, do you want to speak to this since this is your question? Go ahead, Vince. Yes, absolutely. and. Uh... Uh, the, uh, the first time I ever came across that was oh at, the, the, at the Legions, and mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Kelly was there, and so was Wendy Verbong. And uh, the incident happened in the relay when two um, teams dropped the baton, and I, I was there. It was right in front of me. I recorded it down, and then I was asked what color were their batons, and I was, really, does it matter? And and yes, and there was a specific color assigned each lane, and. You know, I didn't know, and I quickly went back to my room and tried to find what color is assigned. So my question was, was there a standard uh, anywhere written down? And I asked David Weicker, and he said, well, you know, that's probably up to the meet director or uh, anyone before a meet to, to do that and inform the officials. Well, so that, that, that was what uh, um, brought about that question and one, wondering, do we actually have a standard? There, there is not a standard for colors, but all relay batons are supposed to have both numbers and colors on them. Um, it's, it's very easy when each of the relay batons has numbers because then a color is dis, uh, assigned. But in the case that colors and numbers aren't assigned ahead of time, then the starter's assistant, when they put them on the track, record lane one has red, lane two has yellow, and, and et cetera. So that, and they hand that over to the track referee. So they're, they know what color each lane is supposed to finish with. Wow. And just lately, and Richard was on the call, I, I have a cheat sheet. Um, in Manitoba, just in the last year or so, we have, um, you know, lane one is always blue, lane two is always green, something like that. And um, Richard, speak up, because I, I actually took a photo of the, the little, what they wrote on their baton box, and it, it's a very helpful tool. Um, when it came into effect, I, I believe it was last year or the year before. And Vince, if we didn't communicate that during Legion's, uh, our apologies. I, I was just surprised and it made me look at my rule book, which is because I had not seen it in, in the Windsor area or even in the Toronto area. Um, and then uh, for uh, the larger mates, uh, the juniors or the seniors or anything, maybe I didn't notice them because I was either at the uh, finish line or at the track referee. But I know I'm going to wear my other hat for a minute. When we host meets here in Windsor, um, and we we have to purchase equipment, um, we don't say, okay, uh, we need a blue baton, a red baton, a green baton, and all that. It is uh, costly for the host organizing committee to do that because if it's if I'm not mistaken, batons come twelve in a box, so you would have to buy a box of red. A box. No, of no, green. no. The new that's correction. That's what we thought. That's what we thought. But it is easier if we say, could we have one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those? Yeah. 
the, the new the new baton the new boxes and batons come with colors multi colors in each box yeah that's what we found out which is great which i think is going to help a lot of the umpires when they're watching the exchange of the batons a lot but i wanted to bring that up because it was very interesting and i thought wow i wonder if everybody has seen that you know thank you vince for asking the question i don't think ottawa's got multicolored batons no, we've got uh, we've got multicolor from past meets that we've held that kids haven't taken, you know. So we do have multicolor, but we haven't bought a box of multicolor. I would that's I think that's on my wish list for the next time. Um, I have a quick question, Jane. You said that the baton is like has a color and a number on it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean the number? The lane number or? It's the lane number, yes. Yeah. So it's very clear uh, right. whose baton that one is. Yeah, makes it so much easier, so much easier. In the Lily, we haven't seen that in Toronto. No, and I don't think we will. In the well, we future. will because we'll tell them that this is something that they need to do. Yes, that's right. Yes. Hello, girl, then. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. I think we've sat long enough. Um, if you look at those uh, rule numbers and just take a quick look in the rule book, uh, some of those I I, I highlighted. Uh, the next one, when we have our meet a whole meeting in in September, I would like to talk about hurdles. I think that's pretty important. Is the hurdles because there is quite a bit written about them now, um, and there's also I think. There's one page that, oh my gosh, it's got so much of, of a green note that you should read. Uh, I can't remember right now. But those are the ones if you want to look at, and I've tried to put them down. Um, I'm curious, I haven't gone on the website, the WA website yet, to see what lap scoring sheet they've got on there. So that I can see how close we are to what uh, World Athletics recommends we use. It's not kind of those information they're putting on their website. Say this again, Serge, what? They're not putting those information well, on the website. You should download each, it. Each. Yeah. The lap scoring? You can download okay. it from the website, they said. Yeah, it's right in the rule book. So anyway, so we've talked about a little bit about the baton. Um, we haven't talked anything else, but. Yeah, okay. Helen, if, if you get into hurdles, that'd be, a, I love that one. Because <laughs> yeah. it looks like you, everything ha gets a report on a hurdle now. Pretty much, like I'm telling you, yeah. So Like um, any, any sort of knockdown. Hmm. Uh, Claude, you've asked us to send you this. This is being recorded. You can access it uh, anytime Sarah gets it on. Serge, how long will it take you to put this recording on? Uh, maybe next week, because every month is out of a vacation or out in okay. the country. Okay. Claude, is that good enough for you? Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for sitting in. I know it's a little late, uh, uh, an hour and 15 minutes. Is that doable for everybody? Hopefully we can next meeting we can maybe concentrate on some rules because I've gone through the PowerPoint. Um, I'm not gonna change anything on this and we'll just play it by ear for the next meeting. Is that okay with everybody? Any yeah. comments? Yeah. Okay, this is wonderful. It was great to see all these nice smiling faces that we're all coming out of this pandemic, all healthy, hopefully soon we can go out to dinner yes that would be nice that would be nice yeah, yeah. okay well, Jane. thank you so Take much Have a great week fun. okay thank and you, you. <clears throat> thank you good night okay. everybody bye good, night. good to see everyone len i like your hairdo <laughs> bye Hi, Aaron. Oh.
Okay, I'm sorry I went a little over. Um, we'll dock your pay. It's okay.